Hello and welcome. So this practice session is all about scales. I'm going to be walking you through a step-by-step -step scale practice routine that will help you to build basically all aspects of your playing. So you'll work on hand coordination, there'll be a little bit of hand independence in the mix, maybe even some speed. Um, but most of all, I'm hoping to help you feel comfortable and confident in learning how to play new scales and how to approach scale practice in a way that's kind of out of the traditional scale practice box and leans to be a little more exciting and engaging. I really just want you to see what scales make possible at the piano. We're gonna begin by doing some stretches because I think it's important to make sure we're really comfortable before we play. And I'm just gonna show you my favorite one. I'm gonna place my thumb inside the palm of my hand and I'm gonna push Oh, that's so nice. I'm gonna push my wrist forward just like this. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And I'm gonna flip my hands like this. And this is something that you can take as much time as you need to do before or after your practices. Um, you can do some wrist circles, some shoulder rolls. And when you're feeling comfortable, make sure you're seated with your feet flat on the floor, sitting nice and tall, and we can begin. So this is, a style of lesson where you are actually going to play with me. So I'm gonna spend a fair bit of time on each of the versions of the exercises that we're going to do uh, so that you can kind of watch and see what's happening and then join in as best you can. So there are a few ways you can approach this. You can allow yourself to just jump in and if you make a mistake, you can just keep going um, and you can also you know watch a section and then pause it and develop it if you prefer to go that way so whatever way you like we are going to begin with a C major scale we're gonna keep this really really simple so to begin I'm gonna place my right hand thumb on C and I'm just gonna begin practicing a one octave C scale and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just focus on my breath for a moment. I know it seems kind of crazy, but sometimes when we are playing the piano, we can forget to breathe. So I'm just taking a minute to check in with my breath. I know it's kind of hard to notice that from where you are because I'm also talking. <laughs> and I'm just gonna relax. So my feet are firmly planted. My pelvis is tucked a little bit. And I hope that you're comfortable and playing along with me. We're gonna do one more of these. Slow and steady, thinking about pushing straight down um, rather than trying to muscle your weight into the keys, just gentle downward pressure. My wrist is up and the top of my hand is pretty stable. So let's do that with our left hand, five finger on C. And I want you to notice that there's no crazy dipping or diving with the top of my hand. If actually I had a candy, I used to do this with my kid students. If there was a candy on my hand, it wouldn't fall off. And then if the student could keep the candy balanced on the top of their hand, I would let them eat it. So another thing to be mindful of as you're working through these first steps of your skill practice is the pivot. So as that third finger comes up and over, are you able to do that without pausing or slowing down? Is it seamless? Um, are you relaxed? Let me go one more time with the left hand. And then we're gonna do a hands together practice. So the thing with scales, especially something like C scale, is we can really go into autopilot mode. And when we do that, we're actually, we're not developing new pathways in our brain the same way that we would is if we were like really engaged in the moment with what we were doing. So let's play the skill hands together and I want you to think about each and every note. You could even name it as you go. We're only playing white keys. We're going nice and slow. The left hand tucks. The right hand flies over. And this is the trickiest part. If you're a beginner playing a scale, hands together can be very challenging. So if you're struggling with lining up those tucks or pivots, I want to encourage you to pick one of the hands and imagine that it's a little heavier than the other. So right now, I'm imagining that my left hand weighs much more than my right hand. And it just helps to connect 
what you're doing. Again, it keeps the brain freshly engaged because it's a bit challenging to play a little heavier with one hand. And it actually can really help with those tucks and those pivots. Um, one more tip I wanted to give you as a beginner, if you're joining me as a beginner here, is to think about when those things are happening. So when you're moving together, first the right hand pivots at the three. So you're gonna play right hand one, two, we've got E, and then it comes under. Now, don't forget to play this left hand F. This two finger sometimes gets skipped as a beginner, so make sure you're lined up just right. And then once you've done that with your right hand, you're home free. Your fingers are lined up right where they need to be. And same thing with the left hand. Now it has its turn to come up and over. And you're good to go. So now the left hand is going to pivot under first. So you can kind of anchor with those threes while you tuck your thumb. Again, don't forget this two finger while this is happening. Reset your left hand. Now you've run out of fingers in your right. You can come up and over and you've got it. So those are some tips for practicing a C skill. So we're going to increase in difficulty just a little bit here. So we're going to build a little bit of speed. So I'm going to play this a couple times. See if you can match with the tempo that I'm playing at now. I'm going to do it once more. And then we're going to play the scale staccato. So that means that we're going to pretend the notes are red hot. So my fingers are coming right off the keys. It's a totally different sensation. It requires a little bit more and a little bit different focus. Okay, so now that you've got that, I want you to practice with your left hand staccato and your right hand smooth legato. Now, I'm making this look easy, but the first few times I tried this, it was an absolute train wreck. So you could pretend like the, the right hand fingers are sticky, like there's glue on the keys or honey or something, and that the left hand is nice and, you know, the keys are hot. And then switch. So now my right hand's gonna be staccato, and my left hand's going to be smooth. So even though this is a common scale, it's the first scale you learn, it's all white keys, this will help to develop your hand independence, your control. One more time. There we go. So now we're going to move on to the relative minor of C. And so if we count up six notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, it puts us on A. We're going to play the exact same notes that we did for our C scale, but this time we're beginning and ending on A. And you'll notice totally different sound. And I'm going to play nice and firm, kind of medium loud volume. Just relaxing and being mindful of how these little tucks and pivots feel under the hands, how the sound is different. And in just a second, I'm going to speed it up quite a bit we go. So see if you can match this and if you can't that's okay. Two more times. Last time. So we've established our major scale, we've established the relative minor and now this is where I like to start to have a little bit of fun. So there's that technical aspect of developing your scale um, but the fun begins um, when we start to become creative. So I like to play the major scale in my right hand and the minor scale in my left hand. It's a bit of a brain buster, but listen to how beautiful this sounds. And I call this a harmonized scale. And you can work this into your daily practice routine as a great way just to connect to how these two scales are related. And just to make scale practice a little bit more musical sounding begin to develop a little bit of speed here. It's a little faster. It feels a little bit more challenging. I'm having to focus a little bit harder here as I go. And I just <laughs> did the wrong fingering because I was focused. Okay, one more time. See, we all make mistakes. mistake um, you just make a little mental note of it and make sure that at some point in your practice you go back and you correct it so you don't develop a habit um, but yes mistakes happen to all of us so now we have our major 
We have our minor, and we've practiced them in a few different ways. So this is where I find that skill practice should be. It can be a little bit more exciting. And here we're gonna build out a little bit more of, um, I don't know, musicality into our scale. So our right hand's gonna be playing the scale, and our left hand is gonna play a fifth. So scales are amazing because they teach us what notes sound good together. So when you're playing in the key of C, your white keys are gonna sound good. So get a fifth in your left hand and just play an ascending, that means going up, C scale. And then with your left hand, move it to A. And then F. And then G. And it's kind of sounding song-like already. So A, F, G. This is where we start to use our scales to develop some hand independence because to maintain this is much more challenging. So we're making the same moves. So I'm actually going to slow this down a little bit. Let's go slow. to practice your scales. So we don't end there. This is just the beginning. So one of the things I'm most excited about showing you um, is, as a part of this lesson is how you can add in more challenging scales uh, sort of gradually in a way that's not overwhelming. I think so often we get really stressed out by, oh my gosh, the scale has you know, this many sharps, but it doesn't have to be that way. When you begin with C scale, you notice that you only have white keys. So if you graduate yourself to a more challenging scale, let's, let's use G major as an example. Instead of thinking about each note and trying to memorize it, consider that G scale begins on G, it ends on G, and it has one sharp. So instead of playing F here, you're gonna play it as a sharp. So, feels different under the hand, but really all you need to think about is all white keys except for where that forefinger lies in the right hand, that F is a sharp. So you can maintain, you can repeat that same routine that we just did and think about how you just had to add one sharp to make it, um, to make it the correct scale. Now you're playing a G scale. And the cool thing is you can count up six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that brings you to the relative minor. So why don't we practice playing a harmonized scale with this, with this new key signature together. We're going to go really slowly. So that means right hand on G, left hand on E. And remember, every time you play an F, it's going to be sharp. So be prepared right here. We're going to go so slow. Right hand's going to tuck. Left hand comes up and over. Back down the way we came. Left hand tucks. And guess what? You're playing in a brand new key. See? Nobody's perfect. Look at my posture is even suffering. I had my foot kicked out under the bench. So another thing I want to bring to your attention, which I really notice on this scale, is watch the pinky finger of my left hand. It's going to do some crazy. Look at it. It's jumping up there. See that? That's tension. It happens to all of us. Um, some more than others. So if you notice it's flying up, don't freak out. There's nothing wrong. Just bring a mindfulness to it and try your best to relax. Um, 
even in my most relaxed, it still likes to jump in the left hand. So I, I wanted to point that out because it's something that I get asked about a lot. Like, oh no, why is this happening? It just happens, it's okay. So that is how you can build out your skill routine. So we did this in C, we played with all the white keys. I've given you an idea of how you can practice this in other keys. So if you're a little bit more familiar with the piano, you could get out your circle of fifths and play through your scales that way, um, just adding in complexity as you go. But the thing I want you to remember about technique practice is it's really important to just stay engaged with what you're doing. Even if you're practicing something that's a simple scale like C major, if you're really thinking about each note and coming up with creative ways to play it, like loud in one hand, soft in the other, or staccato versus legato, it's just gonna create these amazing pathways in your brain so that you're gonna have way more confidence and proficiency in the scale, plus it helps just to make you an awesome piano player. So keep that in mind. And the other thing is, technique is not an overnight win. It's, you know, I've been playing the piano for over 20 years, and I still sit down, and you, you witnessed it. I make mistakes. It's, it's a long game technique. So don't feel like there's a great rush to become amazing at it. Uh, use this video on this little routine to help spark ideas for you. Um, creativity is just so amazing when it comes to learning, you know, more of the technical things because it keeps it fresh. So I hope that this gave you some ideas. I hope that you can um, take these ideas and apply them to all the scales. I hope that you have fun. Comment below. Let me know what you think. And thanks for joining me.